it, 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 but see, the world will, it'll mess us up, won't it? Yes. It'll completely mess us up and, and the things of this world and even our lives today, right? Even our lives today. We look at them and, and yes, we count them in different lives to be precious, but if we truly believe that there is a heaven and we truly believe that there is a God, all things will work together for good to those who love Him, right? Yes. And do we believe that God is? Yes. And that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him? Yes. If we believe that, then no matter what happens to us, then we will get a reward after this life is over. Yes. So praise God for that. Amen? Amen. But even though, even though we have a promise for eternal life, everlasting life. We know we're on the winning side. We know that Jesus lives in our hearts. And if Jesus lives in our hearts, and Jesus is eternal, and Jesus is the life, then we know that no matter what happens, that eternal life that lives within us cannot die. And our flesh may die, but we will not die. Amen? Because of Jesus. And I wanted to just mention this. Simply being a Christian does not mean that you will escape all tribulations. Right. You've got to, you've got to, you, we already know that. But the devil makes us want to believe that we will. You won't escape all tribulations. You won't escape all trials. Amen. 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 We've all gone through those. Or how about this? All temptations. There will still be the tempter. The tempter even tempted Jesus himself. What makes you think he's not going to try to tempt you? That's right. And just simply being a Christian does not mean that we'll escape all trouble. Amen. In fact, just the opposite. We'll probably have more tribulations because we're following Christ. We'll probably have more trials, more temptations, and more trouble. And you're thinking, well, wait a minute, that doesn't sound all great. Is that really biblical? Well, maybe it is. So, let's say 2 Timothy chapter 3. Yea, and all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. It says it. And it's in the right context, too. It's totally right. That means that the more that you totally fix on Christ Jesus, the more persecutions will come. That Satan does not like you people. He does not like you at all. You're thinking, well, wait, wait a minute. You know, I'm not getting. Uh, people aren't, you know, throwing things at my house or TP in my house or beating me up or beating my kids up for my faith. Well, trust me, the spiritual things that are going on to you behind your back, you have no idea how much intervention that the angels of God are 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 putting a barrier between those trials and troubles that are in it. You don't know. I mean, it could be a lot worse. It says, These things I have spoken unto you that you might that you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Is that not beautiful? I mean, that's beautiful. And if Jesus has overcome the world, and Jesus is in the Father, and the Father is in Him, and then they are in us, then that means that we will overcome the world too. Amen? Amen. Alright, now let's go to Acts chapter 16. And I want to share with you an amazing uh, situation that was going on with followers of Jesus. And so let's, let's look there. Again, um, even though we're going to experience trials, tribulations, and temptations, let me tell you this, everybody. The miracles that Jesus is going to allow you to witness, they are glorious. Amen. Have you witnessed miracles? Amen. Have you Are they so glorious? Sometimes we don't even give recognition to these great miracles. It's sad that sometimes we are so self-centered, we forget all the miracles that are going on. Yeah. I mean... Uh, Literally, you have no control over your heartbeat. You went to sleep last night. You have no control over that. But somehow, some way, God, and some of you people are actually close to 70 years old. <laughs> I didn't 
say that you were all the way up in your 70s yet, because that's a really high number. <laughs> but let me just tell you this. You go and see how many vehicles are running perfectly fine right now after 70 years. <laughs> Look at you people. What a miracle from God. Amen. You still work. Amen. You, and some of you got spare parts. <laughs> some, of you have, 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 some of you have got treatment. You've been there and you got some treatment. But you still work. Unbelievable. Praise the Lord. Now that's a miracle. Some, some, I think everybody in here, your eyes still work. Not so good. Some of you, but your eyes still work. Yes. 70 years? Amen. And those things still work. What a miraculous creation. And you know what? The rest of the world don't sit back and admire the, the, the works and the high handy, the, the God's works. The rest of the world, they, they feel like they're entitled to good health. Right. I'll tell you what, our God has given us such glorious miracles. Hallelujah. Also, if you're truly following Christ Jesus, you will also admire when someone gives their heart to Jesus. Yes. That is absolutely amazing. Not only just receiving salvation and everlasting life. Now, that is... You cannot... Just imagine this. Imagine this right now. I seen a commercial the other day, and it was this great big or orange or red ball. And this big red ball was coming into this... Uh, store. This lady was in the store. She was getting ready to leave. And this great big red ball comes rolling over to the door. And it keeps her from leaving. And then she realizes that that is the Mega Millions lottery ball. <laughs> <laughs> then she turns around and says, I can't leave here without getting my chance at Mega Millions lottery ball. That's the commercial. To get you to remember, there's an opportunity for you, although the odds are all in the house, you're throwing your money away. For you to get that. And you're thinking, well, do, do I really want that? Well, let me tell you right now, you can get everlasting life. A life of perfection. A life to where everything works. It's all brand new. But listen, it's all brand new all the time. It renews itself over and over. You get to eat from the tree of life freely. Yes. And you get to have that. It's not a chance. You get to have it. Now that is beautiful. Amen. And to witness, not only just receiving that, but to witness someone else's life transformation that Christ will do. I have experienced people who were severe drug addicts and God would just <laughs> miraculously take away all of their dependence on these drugs. Amen. God could just boom, miracle. I've witnessed that. Have you? Anybody? Amen. Amen. If you've witnessed that, it's just beautiful to watch. And some of you may have loved ones and you're like, oh, if God would only do that for them. Hey, you know what? Let me tell you, keep praying. Amen. Mostly right. keep praying that the Lord will convict them in their hearts to seek the great divine healer. Yes. Because he can do it. Amen. I've seen people give up alcohol at the altar. Yes. Go there, pray, and boom, no, no more. Yes. I've seen it. I've seen God completely purify a filthy mouth cusser. <laughs> Completely just take away all of their filthy language. Yeah. Just like that. Those are beautiful. Those are miracles. And when we see that, a life of transformation to where people, they make a commitment say, no longer will I ever let God be second in my life. He's number one. Amen. Amen. I've seen, and those are the most beautiful things you've ever seen and ever witnessed. Yes. But yes, even though the trials and tribulations and temptations and troubles are here, the miracles of God, they just they bring us such joy, don't they? Knowing God works in us, it's awesome. Yes. Let's look at Acts chapter 16. I want you to look at verse 14. Acts chapter 16, verse 14. And a certain woman named Lydia, 
a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, of Thyatira, right, of which worship God, heard us. Okay, so this lady, she knew God, she, 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 she knew God, she heard us. Look at this. Whose heart the Lord opened. Listen, listen, you've got it here. Hear me out. No one can be saved unless God Himself draw him, draw that person to him. They can't just say a prayer. God has to be a part of this relationship. God has to draw them. God has to convict them of their sin. And you're thinking, well, how does that happen? These are the greatest. The, the Apostle Paul, who's mentioned here, this is like the greatest evangelist of all time. Okay? But it's still, the Apostle Paul or Apollos or any of these other people, they can't save anybody. Right. Only God can bring a soul to repentance. Amen. Only God can bring a person to truly, genuinely seek the Lord. And look what it says. Uh, it says, They heard us whose heart the Lord opened that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. So God softened their heart because God not only softens hearts, but He also hardens hearts. That's right. So He softened their heart. Look at verse 15. And when she was baptized in her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. This means, listen, let me think about it. These guys, they were on a mission trip. They were out there trying to get more people to listen to the good news and the gospel. And this lady, she accepted them and said, let me let you lodge with me. Let me take care of you. You people are doing the Lord's work, and I want to be a part of the Lord's work. That is how the church works. Amen. It's how the church works. That's why we're here. That's why we come to this church, because we know that this is a group of people who genuinely care. If Amen. you don't care about one another in the church, then you're at the wrong church. Amen. Amen. You're at the wrong church. That's right. And if you don't want someone else to pray and pray for you and care for you, again, you're at the wrong church. Mm -hmm. We can all empathize with those who are suffering because we've all been there. And we all truly, truly want each other to come in one accord. And that's what happens here. That's a beautiful thing, right? Mm -hmm. Let's look at verse 16. And it came to pass that there, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us. That means that this lady had this ability to either be a foreseer of things in the future, or she was just really good at being able to pick up things that were happening in um, people's lives, right? Right. And so it's almost like... It's, what's the place there? Casadega? No joke, though. No joke. Those people really do tap into some sort of an unnatural power. Demonic. Maybe some sort of a demonic. There is demonic power. Amen. There truly is. Yes. And, and you know, our kids for years have been desensitized to evil. They watch these movies. And shame on the parents for letting them watch it. You shouldn't be letting them watch that junk. Vampires and all that jazz. Most of that stuff is made up, but I'll tell you, there is an evil spirit. There are evil spirits. Amen. And she had a spirit of divination. And she went out and she met them. And which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. That means this. She worked for the bosses. And the bosses were taking advantage of her, letting her work for them. And they were making big money. So, you've seen it. Palm readers, right? Or, I never understood this. Tarot cards. Yes. I never understood that, but apparently these people, they'll lay a card down and say this or whatever. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't get into too much witchcraft. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> if I did, you'd, be the, you'd have the wrong pastor. Right? <laughs> I don't know how all that stuff works. I don't have any care for that at all, but that's what they were doing. And then they were charging people for it. That still happens today, doesn't it? Yeah. It still happens today. And they were making big money. They were making big money. Verse 17, The same followed Paul and us, 
So this lady was being drawn to these Christian folks. Think of it. God himself, and this is the question I want you to think about because we're going to answer this in just a moment. Why is it that God put it in the heart of this evil person to follow these people? We don't, we don't know at this point. But again, these people who are evil decide to start following and listening to Christians. I'm asking you, right? Does, do, do people follow you? Do people listen to what you talk about? Do people want to run towards you? To, look at this. The same cried, this, verse 17, the same followed Paul and us and cried saying, these men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. She starts testifying. She starts testifying that these are true, uh, these are true messengers of God. And imagine what the whole world's thinking. Imagine what everybody's thinking around her now. Wait a second, that was a witch. And now she's following these people. That's really what's going on. She was a witch. Now she's following these people. And you're thinking, what's going on? She's like, she's witnessing to everybody else. If you guys want to be saved, follow these two guys. Right. Isn't that interesting? Everybody with me? It's very interesting. And verse 18. And she did, and this did she many days. She kept following them for many days. These people are talking about salvation. These people are talking about salvation. These people are from God. They're talking about salvation. So she did it for many days. But all of a sudden, Paul understood this, that that woman still had a devil in her. He still knew that she had a demon in her. Amen. There are people all over the place who are saying, Jesus yeah. is this and Jesus is this, and they still have demonic spirits. She did this for many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said unto the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that same hour. Amen. People are demon-possessed all over this world right now. We see them all the time. They are demon-possessed. And who's exercising the demons now? Who's going out there with the power of Jesus and truly asking these people for the demons to come out of their bodies. Imagine this. They are in everybody. They may be in your neighborhood and you're thinking, well, that's, that's pretty bad, but what are they going to do? They may be in your county. They may be in your state. They may be in your government. They may be in your city government. They may be in your state government. And Lord knows right now as God is my witness, I'm going to prophesy and say, I can guarantee you that there are demon-possessed people in our government right now. We know it, we know it, we know it. If we have the Spirit of Christ, you know it. You know it, and you know what? They're calling the rules. They're making the rules, and you know what they're doing? They're making the rules mostly because they are the lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. They, yes, and they are lovers of not only themselves, but they're also serving another master. They're serving the master that is money. Right. If there's money, if there's power, then they are all over it every day, people. I don't even have to list names. I'm sure that faces are popping up in your head right now. But look at this. It says... That Paul says, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that same hour. Praise God, that's a miracle. Yes. Praise God, that's a miracle. But look at what happens. While these gentlemen are out there trying to do God's work, look at what happens. And when her master saw the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers. You know what? These guys went out there. These dirty thugs went out there and grabbed a hold of these guys and threw them in the middle. They, hey, they seized them. They took them. More than likely, they tackled them. And they just wrestled them in the middle of the city. Because why? They just now hurt their business. They hurt their sales because this person just now had the demon who was given her the power, they released that demon. This girl no longer could do the things that she was doing because she didn't have the demonic power and that was allowing them to make big money and big dollars. Do you think that these demon people who are running the show in our world today wants less demons and people? They want more because it makes them money. 
And these people, they decided that they would throw these godly people right out in the middle of the street. And it says, that verse, verse 20, it says, And they brought them magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city. I mean, think of it. They took them to court. They took the leaders. That's not a good thing. Because a lot of times the, the politicians and the leaders and the judges are demonic too. They're not going to stand up for Jesus here, are they? They're not going to stand up for this. Verse 21, here's what they said. They said, these two people, they teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive. That means, that, again, they're magistrates, right? So these are lawyers going to the court and saying this. Uh, they're teaching this stuff and we're not, allowed to, we're not allowed to listen to them. It's the law. That's what they're saying. And, and it says, neither to observe being Romans. They're like, hey, we, we have our own lifestyle. We have our way of doing things. And these Christians are coming in. They're messing it all up. Now, that's the type of Christians I want you people to be. When the rest of the society wants to go one way, you just follow Jesus. Amen. And if it makes them angry and it makes them mad, then so be it. It does not matter. That's right. Right. It doesn't matter. You follow the, you follow Jesus no matter what. And you know what though? These guys, because they were following Jesus, guess what happens? It says, verse 22, And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to what? Beat to beat them. them. <laughs> they said, you beat these people. You beat them up. You beat up Paul and Silas. And all Paul and Silas did was what? Follow Jesus. All they did was good things. All they did was led someone to the Lord. All they did was allow this person no longer to be demon possessed. Amen. What a great miracle. They didn't do anything except for good stuff. Yeah. Sounds like Jesus, doesn't it? Amen. All they did was good stuff. And the, the magistrates, the, the rulers of the land, the, they said, go and beat them. Verse 23. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, listen, Paul and Silas got beaten. They literally got whooped. I mean, not, not the, not the old-fashioned whooped in the playground. I'm talking. They ripped off their clothes, and they took a whip, and they just scourged these people. And when they had beaten with many stripes, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. And now you're thinking, well, this isn't fair. Why did all this happen? Ask yourself, dude, why did it happen? Why did this woman start following these people? Do you think God had something to do with it? Why did God impress upon this person to follow Paul and Silas all along the way and then eventually this lady be exercised of her demons? Do you think though that's a miracle? Yes. You think that's a good thing? It ended up good yes. for her. It, it, everything looks like it was good for the other lady who got saved and baptized and, her, and now it's good for her. But then these guys, they get in big trouble. So she goes into the... Now, they get thrown into jail. Let's look at this. At verse 24. Now, this is the jailer. Uh, says, uh, verse 24. Who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the interprison and made their feet fast in the stocks. Ladies and gentlemen, these people were taking Jesus seriously. They were taking Paul and Silas seriously. Not only did they beat them, they put them inside the middle of the prison. It's very hard to escape the middle of the prison. <laughs> you don't just put them at the window seat, right? You don't give them the window seat and you put you, you got barbed wire on the outside. I don't know if they had barbed wire back then. I thought that was invented in the West and John Wayne invented that, right? <laughs> but the idea is this. They put them in the middle of the prison because they knew that there was no way that they could escape. Escape. And not only did they do that, but they put chains on their feet. Yeah. Now, they were serious about keeping these people in chains and in prison. Probably because what? Because the government wanted to silence this. The government still wants to silence Christians all over the world. And at midnight, Paul and Silas what did what? Pray. They prayed. I love that. That is the most brilliant thing you could ever do. Think about it. Paul already knows that he has the power of Jesus. He just exercised demons. He knows he has the power of Jesus, but he wants more of Jesus. We need more of Jesus, not less. Amen. We need to come to the house of the Lord more, not less. We need to pray more, not less.
not less. We need to read our Bible more, not less. Yes. And the rest of the world tries its best to take all of your time. The world wants you to spend time watching their junk. The world wants you to spend their time watching the news. The world wants you to listen to their narrative, not God's narrative. That's right. And that's what was really just aggravating everyone here. Amen. And they were following Jesus. And at midnight they prayed and they did what? Sang. They sang praises unto God. Amen. Glory, glory, hallelujah. I mean, just imagine. Why were they praising the Lord? Most of us, when we get down, we do what? Oh, Lord. <laughs> Help me. God in heaven is the praise. No joke. I'm not joking. It is that when you're down and out and depressed, what do you do? You're like, oh, Lord, you got to help me. And you know what? The devil takes the flesh, and he makes the flesh feel so bad, it will affect you physically. Yes. You will physically be wore out because of the depression that falls upon us when we look at things from a worldly perspective. It's natural, it's what happens. But the only way to lift yourself up is to do what? To build the spiritual, to build the spiritual Jesus that's in you to be so big it overpowers the physical and the mental. But sometimes that's even not enough. But God will allow us to do what? Receive all of the amenities that we need because He can guarantee this. He will never allow us to go through more than what we can handle. Mm -hmm. And we can handle death because of Jesus. Yes. So what, what's going to happen now, people? So they're out there and they're like, Lord, help us. Let's just praise the Lord. Do you want me to sing or Jessica? Pray. <laughs> Listen to that. They're praising the Lord. They don't have anything to praise the Lord about. You're thinking, but they do. Because they know the power of the Lord. So they start praying. They start worshiping. And the prisoners heard them. Everybody in the jail is like, what are they? These people have lost it. They're praising God. Don't they know where they're at? Don't they know there's no way out? These people just got beaten. They just got whooped. They're bleeding in their awful state. They are in a bad situation. I know that they're really bad off physically. Because later on the Bible will tell you that they were beat up awful. And they were in chains in the middle of a prison and they're praying and they're worshiping the Lord. Do not, I love it that you showed up even though you showed up late. Better late than never. <laughs> Do not let the devil put all this junk on you and cause you to avoid this blessing. Amen. Yes, amen. The blessing of being able to praise Jesus with other people who are going through junk too. Amen? amen. And you know what? I, I love this. I found this most humble person one time and I had no idea that they were going through so many things because on the outside they looked just fine. But on the inside, their, uh, what was it, the uh, kidneys did not work, man. They had to go in and they had to have the kidney machine. Di dialysis. Di di dialysis. This was back in the 80s when the big machines were about as big as this. And they plugged them up and they had to just sit down and clean their blood all half the day. I didn't know. But they were always at church. They were always smiling. They were always uh, having a good time. But you know what? Deep down inside, they felt awful. And then whenever that blood needed cleaned again, they were itching and scratching because they were getting poisoned from the inside. But they loved the Lord so much that they didn't even let that keep them from coming and worshiping the Lord. Because they wanted to receive the blessing. They wanted to pray. They wanted to praise with other people. And when people come in like that, it's encouraging to me. It makes me want, not want to not want to complain about all the stuff. I could just I could list off all of my complaints too. I got a lot of parts that don't work. <laughs> they were praising God, and the prisoners heard them. Verse twenty six. Look at this. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. Now that is amazing. Do you think that even the winds and the seas obey God? 
Watch my head. This is the right answer. Do you think God can send earthquakes? Watch my head. This is the right answer. Did you know God can cause an earthquake and the earth to crack open, swallow up people alive, and then close back on them? Do you believe that? I believe it. It happens. It's said it in the Bible. God caused an earthquake. It's not just a coincidence. Oh, we were just sitting there praising the Lord. It just so happened that there was an earthquake. And when the earthquake happened, look what happens. So that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loosened. Come on, people. <laughs> Let's have a scientist go and tell you, well, it's because the earthquake did this and it did the right thing, so all the doors just happened to pop open in the jail. All at the same time, the locks came off and the chains fell off of their ankles. It's just that. Uh, no, it's a miracle from God. Yes. Yes. God showed up. Amen. God showed up. And all they did was just pray and sing praises to the Lord. And an earthquake happens. And immediately the doors were open and everyone's bands were loose. And I still can't believe it. How can you explain that all of their chains fell off? How can you explain that? It's a miracle. Verse 27, and the keeper of the prison awaking out of his sleep. I mean, just imagine the keeper of the prison. He's like, dude. That was an earthquake. We're all in a lot of trouble here. Something's going down. And seeing the prison doors are open, oh, I'm in charge of this prison. And all the doors are open. He drew out his sword and would have killed himself. Because why? He knew he was in trouble. Because he was the warden of the jail. He was in trouble because all these prisoners, they're, they're out. There's no way... Think of it. If you were in prison and the doors popped open, first of all, if you're in prison, <laughs> you probably do wrong things anyway. But if you're in prison and the doors are just open and your chains are off, I'm booking Mandy. You know what I'm saying? I'm out of there. These people, look, look. These people. But you know what happened though? Remember this. The people heard the prisoners. They heard praises. They heard praying. They heard a worship service in church. It impacted their lives. Don't think that it didn't. It impacted their lives. And the keeper of the... Uh, so so uh, the, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself supposing that the prisoners had fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, do thyself no harm, for we're all here. I mean to tell you, first of all, I'm just saying as the prisoner's guard, I would have said, are you people stupid? <laughs> no joke. If I was the warden of the jail and the doors were open and no chains were on them, I would question their intelligence. And I would say, what? What just happened here? Why did this happen? Do you think it just all happened by happen chance? Or do you think God's hand of providence was involved here? Amen. God had a purpose and a reason. Think of it. They were even thrown in jail. And you're thinking, well, why were they thrown in jail? That is not a great thing at all. All they did was something good. And they got beaten. And they got thrown in jail. And then, all, then God shows up. This guy's going to kill himself. And he says, Paul says, don't kill yourself. Verse 29. Then he called for a light. So Paul says, hey, go turn on the lights if you don't believe me, because I can just imagine it's dark. Just like Morgan not wanting to go outside because the light didn't work. But if you turn the lights on, guess what? It's easy. Go turn the light on. And it sprang in. So, uh, so he comes in, and he came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas. He came in scared to death. Now, he was going to kill himself because he knew that the torture that he would have had to endure because he let all the prisoners out was going to be worse than death. So Paul says, don't kill yourself, we're all here. So he comes in there and he is just completely beside himself. Verse 30, and brought them. Now listen, this is the, prison, this is the gatekeeper, this is the warden. And he brought them out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Do you think for one second that God was there all along, knew all about this jailer? He 
opened this opportunity for him to be saved. And if Paul and Silas would have been a bunch of crybabies sitting in there boohooing all about their lives. Oh, what was me? Why is this happening? Oh, oh I hate my life. Well, if they would have been doing that, then maybe this person would not have received salvation. Yeah. Instead, he totally knew that these people were going to do an amazing work in this jailer's life. Right. This jailer realized that these people were not serving themselves because if they were, they would have been running out of the prison like crazy yeah. right. and stealing stuff on the way out. We see it on TV, don't we? Yeah. You've seen it a couple years ago. All these people just went into Walmart and just took everything from Walmart. First of all, the joke's on them because if you're shopping at Walmart, it's probably junk. Amen. <laughs> I'm sorry if you like to jump along now, but, but they were stealing this junk. The junk was a see, he's like, what these people, what can I do to be saved? Verse 31, and they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. That is the same message that we're supposed to be saying right now to people. Amen. Every one of us. We need to be telling me the other day I I was walking into this store, this little salesman, this, this, this young kid, he, he's selling something, you know. You see him from a mile away. Am I the only one? But when I see him, I say, I don't even want to shop here today. I think I must be the only one. <laughs> but whenever they're standing outside the door, and you're like, okay, they're on this side. I'm going to exit on that side because I'm i not ready to give anybody anything. That I don't want to listen to their sales deal. But this guy was selling. And the first one time... So this guy says, hey, he's like, how are you doing? You like kids? And I was like, my kids said, not really. <laughs> <laughs> because, see, he was going to use that. He was going to use my love for kids to get, make sure I get a little soft spot in my heart so I'll give him some money. I know it. You know it, right? So I said, I really don't like him. I've got him. But... <laughs> And I said, go on, kids, go on and get whatever you want in the Dollar Tree, you know? So, I said, I said, so, but something in my heart said, just listen to him, just listen to him. So he says, well, so he starts giving me this long speech, and you know what it is. You listen and you see their lips moving, but all you hear is Charlie Brown, wah, 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 wah. And I was like, okay, so, okay, explain, explain this again. So you want me to give you money because you're helping people and you're helping uh, kids, right? Yes. So where are these kids? Well, they're all over the world. Okay, so they're all over. You're helping kids all over the world. I'm helping kids right, right down the road uh, at my church. And so I gave it the office. So it's like, yeah, but you could give money. I said, keep trying and trying and trying. So finally I was like, you know what? I'm going to get all the way in there and I'm going to twist this thing around because I, the kids are shopping. They could be in there for hours. <laughs> So I said, well, let me ask you a question. I said, you've got a really good sales pitch here, and it's working really good. Why are you trying to help out these kids? Well, because it's the right thing to do. And I said, well, it's the right thing to do. If you were to die today, do you think that you'd be heaven, in heaven, or, or do you know anything about that? And you know what he said? He says, well, I'm a good person. I'm a really good person. And I think so. I said, I mean, are you affiliated with the church? I mean, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? I mean, yeah, well, I haven't really thought about stuff like that. And I thought to myself, this person is completely ignorant of everlasting life. Yes. They're all over the place, people. They have no, this kid had never, ever been taught the gospel. Yeah. He has no idea about what Jesus did. It's just, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. So I turned the whole thing around and I gave him my card and I said, if you ever want to know anything about heaven, now you call me. And I said, and once I can explain to you about an amazing gift that God's going to give not only you, but all those kids that you say that you're helping out, you call me. And I'm going to help walk you right into heaven. He's like, I don't know if I want to go there now. Whenever you die, everybody's going to get there. But it is sad. Think of this. That people truly need to find the Lord Jesus. Amen. And if we are bearers of the truth and bearers of the light and we're keeping our mouths shut, then that's sad. Amen. That is sad. Verse 32. And they spoke unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. 
So these people who were prisoners, they go in, Paul and Silas, they were thrown into jail. And you know what? They turned this whole thing around, didn't they? It went from what was me and a bad thing for them to I'm blessing the prison guard. We're saving the prison guard. We're saving the... We're sa we're, we are rescuing the, the, the lady who's demon-possessed. We're getting beaten up all along the way, but we're still doing it for Jesus. Amen. That's where joy comes from. And they went back into this house, and they saved... The, verse 33, and look, the prisoner, what, the, 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 the warden, you know what he does? Verse 33, and he took them the same hour of the night, and he washed their stripes. He literally took in these prisoners, bandaged them up, and took care of them. He, and it says what? It says, and he was baptized. And he and all his. That means that his whole family got saved, people. Even when you're in the worst position you could ever have dreamed of, God still has a miracle. Yeah. He has a miracle for you. You might not see it. You might not believe it. But I'm telling you, at the end of it all, like she says, hasn't He always come through for you in the past? Don't forget. Don't forget that He will still be there. And at the end of it all, Jesus is still going to receive His glory and His honor. Listen, we are saved not for our honor. Sure. Not for our honor, but for His honor. Yeah. God doesn't look down and say, Boy, haven't you been such a good and faithful person? He doesn't do that. You know what He says? Is he says, In spite of you trying so hard, isn't Jesus a great person? Amen. That's how it all... That's a, and, and that's the way it is. We keep working. We keep trying. I had to go to the altar this morning and repent of just some things. And hopefully you haven't reached that point in your life to where you don't think that you have anything that you need to repent of. I guarantee you if you would pray to the Lord and say, search my heart, O oh Lord, and prove to me if there's anything that's wrong in my heart, believe me, you're going to find something. I mean, just the simple thing like we talked about, just simple pride. I like things done the way I want them done. I must be the only one. <laughs> Do you like things being done just the way you like it? Yes. Every time you want it. No, John, no. <laughs> Thou shalt not bear false witness. Amen. <laughs> you want it done your way, don't you? You want it done your way. We're, we're guilty of pride every day. You know what? Pride is satanic. Amen. It's straight from the devil. You have nothing to be proud of. The only thing that we have to boast in is the Christ Jesus. Amen. This person got saved. His whole house got saved. Verse 34, And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them. <laughs> he fed them. He bandaged them. And he rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. Amen. In the worst situation there ever could have possibly been, God sent a revival yes. right to this man's house. I think God did it 100% because He knew the whole situation was going to allow this house to get saved. Yes. Are you willing to take a few beats and a few stripes for Jesus? Yes. That's, a, that's a deep question, isn't it? Yes. Are you willing to do the hard things for Jesus? Yes. Are you willing to get up even when the bed feels so much better to go and pray and worship Jesus? Think of it. It's, it's soul searching, isn't yes. it? Well, let's let's all stay. Let's analyze our heart. Ask ourselves: Are we truly, truly where God wants us to be? If you are following Him, you're right where He wants you to be. If you feel convicted about things in your heart, about things that you can do better for Him to bring glory and honor to Him, you're right where you need to be. Because the rest of the world they don't have that conviction. Amen. The rest of the world don't give two hoots about Jesus. But we do. Praise the Lord.